Whoa! Okay. What's up, party animals? My name is Kezi, and I have been putting off this video for way too long. It is time for the intro to computer music production with LMMS. So first, what do you need? You don't need a lot, actually. Really, you just need a computer and a digital audio workstation, or DAW. And uh, a side note is that even phones can make music too now. Uh, there is FL Studio for Android and GarageBand for iPhone, which are two extremely powerful DAWs for phones. So if you have anything with a processor in it, you can make music. Today we're going to be using a computer, an LMS, but a lot of this goes for any DAW. What does a DAW do? A DAW, again, stands for Digital Audio Workstation, and it does a few key things. First of all, it's able to process MIDI note information. Uh, secondly, it's able to use something called VSTs and play instruments and samples. And lastly, it's able to take all those things and arrange them into a whole song. Now, do you need anything else? You can look around my room and say I have all sorts of things, from MIDI pianos to synthesizers to whole entire standalone workstation units. And the answer is no. Uh, you don't need anything other than a computer and a DAW. Everything else is just icing on the already perfect cake. Uh, one of my biggest inspirations, Porter Robinson, actually, if you go to the FL website, he actually makes a quote where he says, I don't like hardware. It is actively not helping you make music. Uh, FL Studio, a laptop, and some headphones is all you need to make every banger you could dream of. And a lot of DAWs come with a lot of stock instruments, so you don't even need any extra VSTs. Now, what is MIDI? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Device Interface and is the equivalent to sheet music in the world of DAWs in computer music production. MIDI contains a few pe core pieces of information. The first one, and the most obvious one, is going to be the note information. You know, what key on the piano are you playing? Velocity is how hard that key is pressed. So when you press something soft, it's quieter. When it's pressed hard, it's louder. Length is also kept in MIDI information with start and stop points. And there's actually a few other things like continuous controller values and aftertouch. Now, MIDI information is normally stored in clips. So you have these short segments of start times and stop times, and these clips can often be looped or played repeatedly, or played in different ways with different instruments. As something that's important with MIDI is that MIDI does not contain any sound. You cannot hear a MIDI, just like you cannot hear sheet music. You need to play it with an instrument. What are those instruments? Well, they are called, often, VSTs, or Virtual Studio Technology. And these things are things you can download off the internet for the most part, tons of them, free and paid, that basically work their way into every part of a signal chain. And VSTs use this MIDI information to figure out what's played, and uses things like, uh, like velocity to figure out how hard it's being played. And it can also use continuous controller values as well as aftertouch to really shape the sound in different ways as the MIDI notes are being played. Most DAWs also have a type of sampler instrument or VST where you can load up different audio files and play them in different ways. So for example, um, if I wanted to have a drum kit, I could have a sample of a drum kick, a cymbal, some snares, and all those things, and then use MIDI information the same kind of piano note notation, but in this way, it's playing drum kits instead of piano notes. And additionally, with this sampler instrument, you can also play it uh, more like a piano instead of a drum kit, where it uses one sound and it pitches it up and down as you play the MIDI notes. Now, arrangement. 
Arrangement is the part that helps you actually build the song. Now, an arranger is where you can take various lengths of MIDI and audio data and run it through the entire song length. So usually, instead of, you know, notes and bars, you'll actually have a clock below your arranger telling you how long each uh, measure is actually being played for. Additionally, with arrangement, you can actually add dynamics to the sound. So if you want like a chord progression to start fade in when you start the song, that's something that you can do with the arranger. Even if it's just a four bar loop, you can repeat that over and over and allow it to just kind of ease itself in as you play the song. All right, so Using the information that we just talked about from VSTs, MIDI, to the arrangement, to all the t features of the DAW, let's build a song together. I'm using a free software called LMMS, which is like Linux Multimedia Sequencer, something like that. Put it on the screen. Um, but there's a link to the download site in the description. I think it runs on pretty much every operating system. So give it a download, follow along, or if you don't want to or can't, Follow along anyway, because it actually can work on pretty much any DAW. A lot of them kind of work the same way. And the cool thing about LMMS is that if you already have uh, FL Studio, it actually has a lot in common between the two. So let's get started. Look at us, we're at the computer now. Um, so I have the web page open for LMMS and I have uh, the link in the description, so if you wanted to download it, we're going to go ahead and only use stock sounds that just come with it. And it comes with a few presets and a few sounds, so it should be good to make something fun. So, uh, easy enough to download, click the download button, run the program when it's done, and then it should just kind of work itself out. It's pretty easy. Uh, from there, we will go ahead, give it an open, and we start with this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change this to 110 because it thinks it thinks I want it really fast and I don't because I don't I'll sometimes make fast music but I don't want to do that today I want something something bouncy so we're gonna go into this little star folder here and we're gonna open up the preset for triple oscillator and we're gonna open the electric oboe this one sounds nice by itself. I'm going to start with some chords. And I feel like I want to write in the minor key today. And since I don't want to do anything crazy, I'm just going to write in A minor because that's still the white notes. So let's do... I don't know which one it was. Shoot. Yeah, that seems more accurate. Okay. So we're going to do A minor chord, which is just A, C, E, and then we're going to do F, A, C, and then G, whatever it is, is going to be G, B, D, and then uh, E is going to be E, G, B. So E is this one. G is that one, and that one. And now we have a chord progression. And what's nice about this is that we can then... So we know what each of the root notes for each chord is. And to make a good bass line, we're going to use those same root notes. And I'm going to use, what am I using? E origin, or origan, this one. The, it sounds like this. But when I lower it super low, it sounds even better. A, and then we'll do F, and then we'll do G, and we'll do E. Oh, E is lower than F. E, F. Yeah. Ta-da! Then together... I don't 
know how to get this thing to loop. Maybe it's that. I don't know what that does. I don't know this program very well, obviously. Well, okay, maybe not that obvious. We're gonna add some beats. So what I like to do with this program is I like to add, and we'll start with some kicks. So get me, get me into the beat maker. There we are, okay. So I don't like this kicker plugin. So we're gonna actually go ahead and go to the sample library over here. I'm gonna load up some drums. Okay, so I like kick hard number one. And then we'll just add the kicks here and you can listen to it with a kick and it's nice. But I don't want the song to start with kicks, so we'll go ahead and just do that later. Uh, and then next one we'll add is we're gonna add the hi-hat, a nice closed hi-hat to add some like space. Now, certainly sounds like it's missing something, which it was missing that little last note, but it's also missing a snare. So we'll go ahead and pull up this one. And now it sounds like this. the super simple four on the floor beat and then you can press this little copy button it'll double the length of the loop and you can stretch this out so it's easier to see and then we're going to add a fill to the end here and I like to do that perfect and then so we have like a full loop and you can see it's like a little longer than it was before um, but I don't like having because so you can't you can't change the way this pattern is because you'll have to add a new uh a new baseline track so we're gonna go ahead and add uh we're gonna add two of those because i want one of these just to be the kicks so that i can solo different parts and then we'll go ahead and you i'll just do the kick drums here and then for this one, I'm actually going to remove the kick drums. You can't remove this, because otherwise it'll just delete it from every single one of them. But I'm going to remove the kick drum samples. And so now I have... So I can kind of build on each other that way. And then this last one here, I'll go ahead and call it build. And adding builds is pretty cool because uh, we're going to go ahead and make this long. So we'll just do it on every note. And then halfway through this, we're going to go ahead and do every other note. And then halfway through this little section, we're going to do every note in between that. And it sounds like this. Now you can add it in the song. And then you can like, if you control click on this, it allows you to just kind of copy it. So control, click, do that. If you click and then control, it'll do that, which no. But now we'll have, we have the little build section here. So listen. Ta-da! And so now we've got a nice progression with some notes. But I like, while I like this progression, I would definitely want it to be a bit bouncier before I really, before I really let this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bass line and I'm going to add, and I'm going to turn it into stabs. So now it sounds like this. And you got to do that for all of them. And what's cool is when you make a note and you scale it, whoops, 
So if I want it that, every note I make will be that length. If I want it this length, every note will be that length. So when you change the size of a note, it'll change the size that the pen works, which is kind of cool. So now it sounds like this. And then we're going to change these and we're going to make the chords into stabs as well. So I'm just going to have it. And I kind of like it being the end here. And then we'll select these, turn it into the pen tool, and we'll drag this here. And then we'll draw the pens at the last section here. So now it sounds like this. Finish that up. And we'll scale that and then add uh, all of these. And then select you. Scale. You can actually hit copy and then you can put the marker up here and then hit paste. That's not the paste button. There we go. And then. Ta-da! Now, if we listen with them together... We'll add some kicks here. If you want to copy this, it's control, click, drag, and you drag it to the, like, the position you want it. So if you want it right before that, put it there. And then middle mouse, you can delete it. All right, let's add some melodies. I'm going to use the analog bell. So we're going to go back to this little star thing, which is my presets. Not, I mean, it's the presets that it came with, but you, you know. And then we're going to go to, what is it, analog bell? Analog bell. And then we're going to add, add something short here, and what was it, C7, so all the way up here, and that's going to be the A, A, C, B, D sharp, And then we're going to repeat this three times. So we can select, you can do that easily by hitting copy. We can put the marker right on this line here, hit paste, move the marker over a little bit, hit paste again, and now we have a loop going. Whoops, come on, stop at the beginning. And then that last one, I want that to be a little different. So we're going to do the same two first notes, but then we're going to go all the way up to D, and then we're going to go down to C, and then we're going to go even lower, all the way down to G. That was wrong. I like this kind of like in the middle here, because then it's like evenly spaced. Cool. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to, we can give it a listen if you'd like. Awesome.
Awesome. And now I want to add a lower one. So we're going to do the Detune Ghost preset, because that one sounded nice. And then we're going to take this exact thing, hit control, click on it, drag it down one. And then we're going to select everything. We can either can click using this, click on the little section here, hit control A, and then you hold shift, and then we're going to move it down an octave, which is 12 notes. So we're going to press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's probably an octave key, but I don't know what it is, so we'll just, just live with that. Anyway, here's what this sounds like, a lower octave. Uh, I think I want it two octaves, actually. Perfect. And now, together. Cool, so now I've got something going, and then let's add some risers. So in here, if we go to the My Samples, we can go into Effects, and there's this Start O2 sound. So what we'll do is we have the sample track here, and we'll click, we'll make an orange thing, Start O2, we'll go ahead and just drag this there. Or was it Start O1? It was Start O1, so we'll use this, and we'll add this as like a little riser portion so you can listen. And then we're going to go to the drums here. We're going to add a little note right there. And actually, I want to cut this just one bit shorter, just so it starts up and ends at like kind of a nice high point. And then we go to a crash sound. I like this one. That one sounds nice and full. And then give it a listen. And then we'll add like kind of like this breakdown in the middle. Add, uh, add this. Cut this down a little bit. Add this crash again. And then we'll do. We'll just jump right back into here with everything. And then we'll do this, we'll play this twice. And then we'll go ahead and this last one here. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to drag this out just a tiny bit. And I'm going to add one last A note. And so you can see it made it a little bit longer. And now there's that A note there. And so we'll give it a listen.
that's it. That's a song. Um, it's not long, it's not complicated, but it's just a few things. It's honestly not the most difficult thing in the world to create something pretty banging on this. Um, so, yeah, I'll drop a link to the uh, project file in the description. Actually, let's make a project file to put in the description. Uh, what am I going to call you? Intro to computer music production with LMMS feet Kezi Coyote. There we go. That's a name. Now, uh, link in the description for the project file. So if you wanted to do this, at, like screw around with it yourself and see kind of like if see the difference. If you followed along and made your own thing, that's great too. So yeah, share your project if you want to see it. I don't, I don't think I'm making a closer now because I don't think I should. I can't believe I'm done. I did this. It, it took 25 minutes, so we'll hopefully crop that down to a lot shorter. Um, cue the outro. Awesome. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tune. I hope you enjoyed working alongside me. Um, I would love to hear anything you've made. If you followed along exactly and made your own thing, or if you've changed anything, leave a comment down in the, uh, leave, bleh, leave a comment down below and I'll give it a listen. I also have a Discord server where you can submit your music as well and join in, have the fun. There are tons of people who make music and I'm in there often as well. So if you want, if you want to make music, my Discord is a great place to like share it. I'm going to be making more videos about music production. Uh, the next few videos I want to do is stuff about music theory and then more videos about sound design. So those are a few concepts that can really help you get your productions to the next level. And so I hope this introduction was super helpful. Um, leave a comment, leave a like if you liked it, subscribe because I'm making more videos like this. It's not like this is going to be the last one. So thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.